Welcome back to the Blocky and Squinty Comic Vault. Today I'm going to talk about a random Superman issue from the early 2000s, from the year 2000. This is from Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis. It is uh, Superman number 156. Uh, Captain Logan, that's a real random issue out of nowhere, and it's even kind of in the middle of an arc. Why are you talking about this? Well, because... Uh, I like talking about random single issues sometimes even when they're in the middle of stories and also because today I thought it would be amusing if I had my son Jason, my seven-year-old, go into the vast and ominous comic vault, the blocky and squinty comic vault, and go find me uh, just a random issue, anything he wanted me to take a look at, and I told him I would review whatever he grabbed, and this is what he grabbed. So it's Superman versus Parasite, this is a uh, suggestion. Jeff Loeb era, this is just before Our Worlds at War. This is like a year before that, uh, maybe a year and a half. I think that starts in like the 170s. And uh, what's going on here is Superman is having some uh, issues in his marriage, uh, allegedly. We don't know exactly what's going on with Lois, and that's revealed in the next issue. I went ahead and read up on that, because I don't know what exactly is going on with her just looking at this, and I would have been totally in the dark, so I cheated and looked ahead a little bit, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, so Superman is is trying to uh, distract himself with lots of work, both as Clark Kent and Superman, because things aren't going so great at home right now, and Lois seems kind of worried, maybe, that, or he thinks she's worried that he's maybe sleeping around on her, uh, that he's dating someone else. And uh, Jeff Loeb kind of... I, throws some coincidental other women in Superman's life uh, into this issue very a la Smallville. It's not surprising whatsoever that Jeff Loeb worked on that show uh, in order to kind of create some forced drama. And it's not as bad as it reads because it turns out it isn't actually her. And again, we'll get to that later. Uh, but anyway, so at the beginning of this, uh, Superman is being shot with bullets. The very classic Superman up against some uh, random m uh, uh, mobsters or bank robbers. I guess here it's bank robbers and uh, they're shooting them because bank robbers are stupid and even though Superman's been around for a long time and everybody knows the bullets bounce off his chest they try that anyway now I, I thought of something while I was reading this though we always say that and it always seems really dumb that people try to shoot Superman and then I thought yeah but he loses his powers all the time and if you were aware of that and I don't know how public uh, most of those situations end up being if you knew that Superman was constantly losing his powers and that random things would make him sick even besides kryptonite you might think that just on the off chance that this was one of those times, you'd go ahead and shoot him. And that maybe makes sense. That's the only way that it does. Of course, that's not brought up here. These aren't like uh, uh, super intelligent bank robbers. But considering that this is an issue in which Superman starts to kind of feel bad and uh, is getting kind of a kind of a cold, and we don't, there's a mystery about why he's getting sick. Uh, those bullets actually could have maybe done something, uh, but he he doesn't he doesn't start to feel sick until a little bit later apparently. Anyway, so Superman or Clark, excuse me, turns in a uh, story to uh, Perry White about. Uh, Superman's exploits uh, going around stopping bank robbers and he writes this curious article considering the fact that he is Superman uh, questioning why in the world Superman is going after lowly bank robbers and I had a couple of questions about this by the way in the, in the middle of this action scene uh, we have an homage to like the umpteenth homage to action to, to uh, action comics number one anyway um I, I have a couple of questions about this article he's writing. One of them is, uh, if you are uh, Superman, would you want to uh, like like draw attention to the fact that you're doing something unusual? Like, I I, I I can understand why you know somebody else would write this article or Lois before they got married, because of course, as I said, this is the the, the days where Lois and Clark are married, of course. Um, but you you, you kind of I, I found myself kind of wondering why Clark feels the need to uh, m like draw attention to this, and he writes it too much like an expose and not enough of just this is what Superman's doing. 
and then the second thing is, is Superman stopping bank robbers really that strange? This is the guy who just flies around and saves people, right? Like, when he is not dealing with some big threat and there's no police around, he would feel obligated to stop this, especially because he can't be hurt and he's not a liability. He's probably not going to, you know, cause any undue casualties or anything, it, uh, ge you know, generally speaking, getting involved. Uh, so I, I, I thought that whole scenario was uh, was, was kind of contrived and, and weird. So anyway, uh, then the rest of the issue is uh, internal monologue from Perry White uh, talking about how uh, he feels about Lois and Clark's relationship right now and how he's worried about them and they don't seem to be doing too hot and he has this whole allegory about uh, newspaper work uh, and and uh, how it's like relationships. The, this idea that you always have to think about the next day. You always, have, you always have to think ahead. You don't want to think about your mistakes too much in the moment. You learn from those mistakes uh, from yesterday, and then you keep uh, moving forward. And life is like a newspaper in that uh, it's difficult to juggle, and it's hard to put the pieces together. Where they, it's hard to find out where they fit sometimes, and uh, whatever is uh there, there's there's always there's always something more important on the horizon so you don't want to think too much about the problems of today which i think is kind of uh less of a profound allegory and more of just a way to foreshadow that lois isn't actually lois uh, the idea is th these problems feel like a big horrible issue right now but pretty soon clark's gonna find out that what he thinks is going on isn't actually going on and uh there, there are there are bigger fish to fry and and uh, he, he shouldn't even be upset with Lois because it's going to turn out that it isn't actually Lois. And of course, it's not like Perry White knows that stuff, but I think that's Jeff Loeb kind of trying to project that, um, trying to kind of foreshadow that. Uh, uh, with his internal monologue, uh, some of that is uh, is is decent. Uh, I, I liked th the idea of Perry White uh, talking about their relationship and how he feels about the the, the politics of the uh, workplace relationship and that kind of thing. But it gets a little bit distracting because you kind of lose it in places where there's, and this happens a lot with internal monologue, especially when it's from someone who's not in the scene, where you have two people talking and then you have this third intrusive voice that's having its own one-sided conversation that might be about what they're talking about in a subtextual way, but as you're looking at all those things together, it's hard to keep track of this thread versus this thread, and you wish it could be organized uh, in, in a more uh, logical fashion. So anyway, um, Lana Lang shows up, and uh, pretty much just so that uh, Lois can walk in on them and get all uh, upset with him for hanging out with Lana, thinking that something is awry with their marriage, and uh, this, by the way, uh, has got to be before Lex Luthor becomes president. He becomes president in 2000, but at the end of this, uh, fake not Lois ends up going to see Lex Luthor, and he's not in the White House, and uh, Lana's talking about an injury that Pete Ross just had, and Pete Ross is President Lex's vice president, so I'm, I'm wondering, because uh, I, I haven't read anything around this, if, because they're still in Smallville, so I'm wondering if he is running with Lex right now, or if that's like an 11th hour pick uh, because it, it certainly doesn't read like he's in the middle of politics right now. So anyway, Lois walks in and she's obnoxious and uh, angry with Clark and makes it sound like she's about to divorce him. She's like, we used to have a good thing, Smallville. And then she walks away angry. Uh, so it, it, we'll, we'll count that one of those uh, kind of counting crypto freak moments. Uh, so we got, we got one of those in this issue. And then I, uh, Jimmy Olsen is flying outside. He's he's uh, he's freaking out, and it turns out that uh, Parasite has um, launched him, and Superman catches him, and then Superman is fighting Parasite. Um, remember, that's our villain from the cover. Remember that? Yeah. So, uh, to make a long story short, uh, Parasite has kind of a new power set because. Parasite has a new power set because he is uh, had a, a run-in with someone called Strange Visitor. That's a little on the nose, right? Clark Kent, uh, Superman, Strange Visitor from another planet. There's got to be a villain called Strange Visitor, and uh, I don't know what he looks like or anything because I, I haven't read this stuff. And Parasite uh, runs into him and then, uh, or has run into him, and he is now able to not just steal people's life force and their powers, but he's able to hang on to them. And so he's trying to get Superman's powers so that he can hang on to 
it. And we're going to find out in the next issue, apparently, again, I've not read that, but I've read a synopsis about it, that uh, Parasite also has the ability to shapeshift now. And the way, again, I haven't read that issue, so I don't want to uh, give any criticism of this, but the way it reads is like he just ran into some shapeshifter somewhere and took that power. We're not even told, I don't think, who it was or what the scenario was. But anyway, so he's taken shape with some kind of shapeshifting powers. I guess ultimately it's not really that important, though, since that is his ability. Uh, if he found a shapeshifter, he'd be able to steal that power. But anyway, so he is Lois Lane. Uh, he's been shapeshifting Lois Lane, and that's why uh, Superman is having marital problems. So uh, it's not as interesting as it might have been, uh, but then... You know, it, it, it obviously wasn't her in the first place, and she's acting, uh, you know, you know, totally insane, and she's very Lana. She's like a little bit worse, maybe, than Lana Lang from Smallville. Uh, just everything Clark does, she's not giving him the time of day. She's not giving him a chance to explain himself or anything. And then it turns out it's not actually her. Um, so it, it's it, in in Jeff Loeb's uh, defense, he's not writing this like it's real problems with the marriage exactly. I mean, obviously Clark's gonna feel that way because he doesn't know what's really going on, but he is, uh, he, he's trying to kind of give us a sense that there's something else looming and some other problem, and uh, the, the tonally, it reads a lot more like uh, a, a just, a, a, you know, you know fun action superhero romp than anything, and so uh, it, it, he's, he's doing a good job of uh, telegraphing that it's not this, this really, you know, forced drama uh, like it reads, but then... I don't feel like Clark is as smart about it as he ought to be either because he, and of course we do spend enough time with that stuff that it's it's a little bit grueling, but uh, Clark says to Lana, she's acting like she's not herself. When Superman says someone's acting like they're not themselves, the first thing he should do is x-ray vision them to see if there's anything awry, right? Especially if it's his wife, it's maybe arguably a little bit less of a violation there, and she would, what your real Lois would want him to do that, I would think. Uh, so anyway, at the end, uh, Parasite, in the guise of Lois, goes to Lex Luthor, and he's like, how'd you get into my place? And after the last issue, we know how she got in, because she's a shapeshifter, so she probably pretended to be some guard or something. And uh, she's like, he says, what do you want, Lois? And, and she's like, uh, the real question is, what do you want, Lex? And so I guess this is going to be some kind of a super villain team-up thing next issue. And uh, that, that kind of read like it could get kind of creepy, because he's not actually Lois Lane. And I don't know how far uh, Jeff Loeb takes that moment if you get my drift. But anyway, so Lois is like, oh, you blew it. And then she, oh, that's the place, excuse me, after she sees uh, Lana and Wonder Woman both conveniently standing next to Superman. That's when she says, we had a good thing, Smallville. And then she, she so so actually she, she goes away twice. Uh, so so that's so we count count two of those walking away angry. Uh, so yeah, Wonder Woman just shows up out of nowhere. Apparently John Jones like called her up and was like, "Hey, Par Parasite's rampaging. Superman needs help." So she goes there, and uh, it's real convenient timing. And again, it's got to be just women in Superman's life to make fake Lois think that. So maybe there's there's something going on with Clark and Lois's actual relationship, and Parasite picked up on it because again, I haven't been, I, I haven't read the stuff around this, so this might be a little bit better than I'm reading it. But um, yeah, it's 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 convenient. It's it's easy. There is uh, certainly a little bit of fun to be had here. Uh, I like I said, I like his voice for Perry White. I think that stuff's pretty good. Parasite's fun. I like I like big giant smiley parasite. That's fun. Uh, this artwork is uh, is kind of distracting and, and, and irritating. Uh, I never liked this era. This is the big blocky bulky uh, like bloated a bunch of bees to describe this artwork uh, era for Superman and. Uh, squinty-eyed Superman. So I always thought that that was supposed to maybe be kind of an homage to Fleischer, uh, but it just doesn't work on the page where he's always got his eyes closed constantly and he's like fighting people with his eyes closed and he's like, he'll, he'll like open them slightly for heat vision, but like he's mostly just, I'm Superman and this is like his dramatic look. And that's what he does. 
and uh, that's what Our Worlds at War looks like. So, so uh, while Jeff Loeb's working on Superman, it kind of always looks like this. Uh, and even some, uh, if memory serves, Superman Batman uh, looks like this. But uh, so yeah, that's that's Ed McGinnis uh, drawing Superman, and I feel like I've liked him in other things, but just this this choice. And I mean, it is a stylistic choice, and it's consistent. And you know, the facial expressions aren't like like weird and amorphous and disturbing and hard to look at or anything. But it's just real super cartoony and I kind of feel like if this were a cartoon it would actually maybe look a little bit better like if this was moving I feel like it might be easier to digest but somehow rather on the page uh, and trying to make me take this serious as the Superman the, the main Superman title right now I don't know or one of the main Superman titles I don't know it, it's it's not great so anyway um, that's uh, this issue, Superman number 156. Everybody, thanks always for watching. Sure appreciate it. And I will be back with you again with another comic vault in the near future. Thanks for watching and happy reading.